Hello and welcome to the webinar on the effective use of the encryption tool in OASIS Primer. Thank you for joining us today. In this session, we'll dive into the practical aspects of using OASIS Primer's encryption tool. You'll learn how to effectively set up and apply various encryption methods to protect your sensitive data. We'll explore the advanced features of the tool, showing you how to customize your encryption strategy for optimal security and flexibility. And we'll cover the essential steps for licensing your models using the vendor keyword, giving you control over encryption and distribution. So what is the encryption tool? The encryption tool in Oasis Primer is a dedicated feature for encrypting crucial keywords within your LS Dyna models. You can encrypt various keywords like materials, load curves, airbags, seatbelt pretensioners, retractors, and slip rings. Why should you use the encryption tool in Oasis Primer? It offers significant advantages, reducing errors through automation, enhancing time efficiency by speeding up the encryption process, ensuring consistency across your data security, and improving usability by generating helpful metadata. This tool isn't just about boosting security, it streamlines your entire encryption workflow, safeguarding your data effectively. In the next section, we distinguish between full and partial encryption within OASIS Primer. Full encryption is a comprehensive method, encrypting every part of a keyword along with all its associated titles and material attributes. This creates a secure block at the end of the keyword file providing the highest level of obscurity. On the other hand, partial encryption focuses on encrypting only specific segments of a keyword. This method allows certain elements to remain clear and accessible for reference with the encrypted parts positioned directly below the unencrypted sections in the keyword file. This strategy is ideal for hiding in-depth material data while keeping crucial information like material type, title, and ID visible. Each method has its strategic advantage whether you require maximum security or a balance between confidentiality and accessibility. Let's delve into an example to clarify the distinction between full and partial encryption within OASIS Primer. With full encryption, we're looking at comprehensive coverage. This method encapsulates all information related to the map rigid keyword, including every detail and identifier. However, this complete coverage can obscure IDs, raising concerns about potential conflicts. To mitigate this, the use of end data, metadata that provides information about the encrypted blocks, can be employed. This helps to block of certain IDs, reducing the likelihood of future ID clashes. In the case of partial encryption, the approach is more targeted. It encrypts only a portion of the MAT rigid keyword, thus safeguarding crucial details while keeping the ID and fundamental material information visible. This visibility is key for the user as it maintains the accessibility of the model's essential details without the need for additional metadata to manage ID conflicts. Full encryption is the route to take for those seeking complete security, while partial encryption offers a balanced solution that protects sensitive data while ensuring ease of use and reference for Primer. How do you set up the encryption tool? To operate the software, you'll require an external tool named New Privacy Guard, or GNU PG for short. It's an open source encryption software, which means that we can't bundle it directly with our program. Therefore, you'll need to download it separately. You can easily do this by visiting the official new PG website and downloading the simple installer for new PG. In this demo, I will be guiding you through the process of setting up the encryption tool in Oasis Primer, assuming that you have already downloaded the GPG executable. If you require assistance in locating the correct GPG executable, please contact Dyna Support or remain here until the end where I will be available to answer any questions. Let's begin. First, you will need to load a model into Primer for the purpose of the demo. I have loaded a dummy model of a vehicle occupant. To initiate the setup process, navigate to the other section and select the encryption tool option. You will be prompted to select your GPG executable. I have placed mine in my demo folder but depending on your installation location, you may find it elsewhere. For Linux users, Primer may use the default installation location as GPG is packaged with some versions of Linux. Should you wish to change this, you can modify the executable used in the Primer preferences. 
Once you have selected the GPG executable, the encryption tool will appear. To select which keywords you want to encrypt, click on the Keywords button. This will display the keyword options. For this example, I will choose Seat Foam Keyword and then select Get Associated to also include the associated load curves related to the selected material. In this case, there is only one load curve. Now you have the option to choose between partial or full encryption. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will change the material encryption type to partial encryption. Now press encrypt. This should start the process of encryption. And at the end, we should be left with a new encrypted model. Let's talk about some advanced uses of the encryption tool. In this section, we will break down the different encryption keys available to you and help you understand which level of encryption strength to use. Additionally, we will cover the range of options for both partial and full encryption, and I will guide you on how to effectively use comments to manage your encryption blocks with ease. When selecting an encryption key, two main factors should be considered the version of LS Dyna you're working with, and the level of security you require. For the LS Dyna version, the choice is straightforward. Choose the encryption key that aligns with your model's version. Encryption keys are forwards compatible, which means you can use older versions of encryption keys with the latest LS Dyna version, but you may get warnings if you choose to do this. Regarding the strength strength of encryption, it's a matter of your personal or organizational security needs. A 24-bit key, although less robust, will result in smaller encrypted file sizes, which can be beneficial for handling and storage. On the other hand, a 48-bit key offers heightened security at the expense of larger file sizes. It's about balancing security with practicality, stronger encryption for sensitive data, or a lighter approach for less critical information. For partial encryption in our tool, you have a couple of choices that can tailor the encryption to your needs. The first option is append material info in title. This is particularly useful for mass calculations within Primer. It works by adding key material properties like density, Young's modulus, and Poisson's ratio directly to the material's title. The second option is the encryption start line. This feature gives you control over where your partial encryption begins. You can specify the exact point or card line where the encryption starts, allowing you to protect sensitive data within a keyword while leaving other parts open. This level of customization ensures that you're encrypting exactly what you need. No more, no less. Moving on to full encryption, we introduce options involving end data. End data is essentially additional information that follows the end keyword and placed at the end of the keyword file. This data isn't processed by LS Dyna, but is utilized by Primer for various functions. You might use end data for tasks like model checking, performing mass calculations, reserving certain IDs, and keeping track of the information you've encrypted. In the encryption tool, we offer a few end data options. These options include the ability to remove the title from the keyword. You can also convert all materials that you want to encrypt to matte elastic, which obscures the material type. With this option, you can use preset data for your material keyword, like setting custom values for density, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, or opt to keep the original material properties visible. These choices provide flexibility, enhancing the security and functionality of your fully encrypted keywords. With full encryption, we provide two distinct methods, collective encryption and individual encryption. Collective encryption amalgamates all keywords into a single encryption block within each include file. This approach offers several benefits. Firstly, it is quicker than encrypting keywords individually. It enhances efficiency and simplifies management as all encrypted keywords are grouped together. Should you need to remove encrypted data, you can do so by deleting just that block. It also supports coherent grouping, enabling you to encrypt related keywords together, like all material keywords or associated load curves, which helps maintain organized data handling. Next, let's discuss individual encryption. Individual encryption means encrypting each keyword separately, so each keyword gets its own encryption block. The main advantage here is the ease with which you can identify and manage each keyword block. This proves particularly useful when you need to delete or add a new keyword, significantly simplifying the process. Moreover, this method allows for a more structured organization of keywords. However, managing a large number of encryption blocks can be challenging. 
To improve clarity and ease this burden, it's recommended to use comments effectively. By adding comments that describe the keyword type, you can better understand the contents of each encryption block, which in turn enhances data management. Another consideration is the performance of the encryption process. Generally, individual encryption is slower than collective encryption, which might affect the efficiency of encrypting large models. What exactly are comments? Comments serve as non-executable metadata linked to each encryption block, playing a crucial role in annotating and organizing PGP data. Their primary purpose is to improve the management of encrypted information by providing clear labels and organizational cues. OASIS Primer, for instance, automatically embeds comments like Primer Partial Encrypt or Primer Full Encrypt into encryption blocks. This practice facilitates the internal processing within Primer, ensuring encryption blocks are correctly associated and placed as intended. Moreover, comments enhance visibility, allowing users to easily discern the types and purposes of created blocks. By adding custom comments, teams can achieve greater clarity, effectively labeling and managing their encrypted data. So how do you license your models? To license your models, it's necessary to use the vendor keyword within the encryption tool. The encryption tool supports the specification of vendor date, allowing you to assign an expiry date to your encryption blocks. Additionally, you have the option to configure unique messages that will display once your encryption blocks expire, further customizing the licensing process. To set up these vendor options, simply navigate to the vendor options section where you can specify expiry dates and other relevant details. Should you need further assistance with vendor configurations, please reach out to dyna.support at airapp.com for specialized support. Let's look at an example using the vendor feature. In this scenario, the encrypted text is programmed to expire on the 3rd of July, 2023. After this date, the content becomes inaccessible. Additionally, a post expiry message is configured to guide users on the next steps. It reads, please get in touch with your distributor. This message serves as a direct line of communication for further assistance or to renew access, showcasing the utility of setting expiry dates and customized messages with the vendor option. In this demonstration, I will guide you on how to access and use uh, the vendor options. Let's start by opening the options menu, which will display all available encryption settings. Scroll to the bottom of the panel to find the vendor options section and click on it to bring up the specific vendor options panel. To activate the vendor date feature, simply check the corresponding box. This will allow you to append the vendor date to your keywords. You can set the desired date by editing the day, month and year fields with the provided text and combo boxes. If you need to include messages that will appear after the expiry date, click on enable vendor additional lines. When adding these lines, keep them concise to maintain a clean appearance in the terminal. After you have selected the option you want, select apply and then apply the settings in the encryption options menu. All encryption blocks will now be created with your applied vendor options. We'd like to inform you that we're offering spaces on Arup's training courses at no extra cost. If you're interested, please sign up through the link provided on our website. For those who might have missed our earlier webinars or are looking to revisit them, recordings are available through the second link. Feel free to access these at your convenience. If you'd like to stay informed about our latest updates and news, we invite you to sign up for our monthly newsletter. You can easily subscribe by visiting the link shown on the screen. Thank you all for attending today's webinar on encryption. Uh, I'm more than happy to discuss any of the content we've covered further or to expand upon any of the concepts that have sparked your interest.